I'm Patricia Grubel from Los Alamos National Laboratory, and this section of the tutorial is on Git workflows. Uh, this will help you with uh, using Git to improve the workflow of your software development team and how they help uh, the Git workflows help with collaboration. Here's our license slide again. Version control is an important part of software development process. Some of you may be familiar with Git, so I don't plan to cover the basics, although we are willing to help anyone during uh, hands-on activities, and we will point you to uh, resources that can help you. What we are going to cover are the mechanisms that workflows use so that you can determine what will be useful for your team. I will show you some different types of Git workflow models and some Git workflows used successfully by several scientific software teams. Many teams are distributed and team members have a separation of concerns, so they work on various parts of the code. They want to collaborate efficiently so that the code will be sustainable and produce correct results. Git workflows help many scientific software teams attain these goals. The most basic workflow is a centralized workflow, and this is the type of workflow that many older types of version control systems use. Some of you may have worked with subversion workflows where there is a control central remote repository. By default, when you start a Git repository, it will have a main branch. And if you use this model, it can work for some personal development or maybe a very small team with good communication. Since all commits to the remote repo go in the main branch, it can become very difficult to collaborate since developers may commit at different frequencies and it becomes hard to ensure interfaces work well. Testing can also be very difficult. The Atlassian Bitbucket site has information for many different types of workflows, so you can look for more detail of details of the models that I am explaining in this tutorial. Next, we will look at the mechanisms that help us create workflows that are more amenable to collaboration. The, those mechanisms are branches, pull requests, and forks. These mechanisms allow collaborators to build workflows and policies that aid collaboration. Developers can easily work on different parts of the code. Review and testing can be performed before merging into the main branch, and contributions can be made from outside the team. Branches are the basic mechanism to use to build a variety of Git workflow models. They create independent lines of development Branches enable developers to work on a feature or an issue separate from main. Those changes can be tested and refined before merging into the main branch. A developer can work in a branch and make commits to the remote repo without changing the main branch. So the main branch is protected and changes are stored and can be shared through the remote repository. Once a feature has been completed and tested, it can be integrated through a merge commit. Workflow policies aid collaboration. Policies prevent unnecessary complexity and make collaboration more efficient. In the case illustrated, there are two branches with names that are not meaningful, and they start and end from different places. Imagine that the policies, if any exist, are not clearly documented, and there are many software developers on the team. The result would be a repository that has many complex branches and parallel development would become very difficult. Some policies that might help prevent the problems that are depicted in this diagram include giving your branch a descriptive or meaningful name, name the branch for the feature you are implementing, or link it to an issue. You may set a policy for where branches start and end, such as all branches must begin from main and be merged into main or another principal branch. A special type of branch is a feature branch. In a feature branch, developers usually work on some sort of feature, and when it is finished, it will be merged into the main branch, and then the feature branch can be discarded. Developers can work on different features and fixes simultaneously. The example on the right showed two people, Alice and Bob, working on one repository. You can see that Alice has downloaded the main branch to her local machine and has created a feature branch for add solver A. She started from commit C of the main branch. 
and has added commits D, F, G, and I. Bob also downloaded a copy of the repo to his local machine and started a branch to work on issue 151, but he apparently downloaded earlier and started from commit B of the main branch, then added commits E, H, and J. You also see that at this point in time, the remote repository has a main branch with commits A, B, and C. Their development causes a divergence from main and each other, but can be merged through collaboration since they are using separate branches. This diagram shows a feature branch diversion in Bob's local repository. You can see that Alice merges into the main branch in her local repo and that she has no issue. So she pushes to the remote repository and deletes the branch. At this point, her local repository has identical commits to the remote repository. Alice merged her commits and pushed to the remote repository first. Bob then pulls main from the remote repository and gets Alice's changes in his main branch. But when he tries to merge his changes into main, he gets a merge conflict. He will need to fix the conflicts and at this time may want to communicate with Alice for the best path forward. Bob has a future race condition since he started from commit B. So Bob rebases issue 151 branch to the latest commit on main. Bob can push his branch to the remote repository and Alice and Bob can review the branch, communicate and work together to resolve the conflicts in the branch. The feature branch can then be tested and when all is fixed, it can be merged cleanly into main. Feature branches are usually deleted after merging into the main branch, but many workflows have lifetime branches in addition to main. Lifetime branches are not ever deleted or they at least exist for a very long time. These branches are in all the copies of a repository and serve different purposes. For instance, there may be a development branch where changes are made frequently and may not be stable, or they may be stable, and there may be production and pre-production branches that are considered stable and will be released. There may be other lifelong branches such as ones for testing. The Git workflow of a particular repository is comprised of the lifetime branches and the policies for their use. In this example, the policy is that feature branches start from the main branch and are committed to the development branch. They are most likely reviewed and tested before commit to, de to development. They may undergo even stricter tests before being merged into main from development. You can see in this case that there are several commits into development from the add solver A branch. Then apparently it was finalized and committed into main. The next mechanism for collaboration in Git workflows is the pull request. Sometimes we shorten that to PR. So if you hear me say that, I'm talking about pull request. Or if you're using GitLab, it is usually, it is called merge request. Once changes are completed in a feature branch, the developer can create a pull request. This alerts the development team that the changes are ready to be merged into the main branch. A PR should be reviewed and tested before the merge. This allows discussion about the PR and possible iterations of more commits on the branch during the review. A reviewer or set of re reviewers can be requested for the pull request. Maybe you want to select an expert in a particular area to review the feature you just developed. Or you might make sure the person who submitted the issue you just fixed reviews the change. As with branches, setting policies for pull requests are part of the overall Git workflow. These policies may include what tests must pass before merging a PR and how many approvals are required before merging it. Forks are very powerful mechanisms for collaboration for open source software. A fork is a complete copy of all the branches of a repository into a different account. Anyone who has read access to the repository can create a fork of it. For instance, if some users of a code are not on the main development team, but they want to add some special feature to the code for their own use, 
They can fork the repository and work on the feature in the branch in their fork. They can even give write access to their fork to developers of their choosing. If they complete the feature and feel it would be useful to the wider community, they can then suggest the addition of the feature through a pull request to the original or what is called the upstream repository. The maintainers of the upstream repository can review the feature change and decide whether or not to merge the feature into the upstream repository. So forks are valuable for contributions from outside sources, but keep control of the repository within the team that maintains it. Since the maintainers keep control of the original repository, they can prevent a huge number of branches from entering the repo. There are some caveats. Forks of public repositories are also public. When making changes in a fork, you should make changes in branches that you create, not in main branches. Uh, issue requests and pull requests are not copied into the fork. And forks are very valuable to open source community since they allow contributions from outside software teams. Those were the Git mechanisms that are used for Git workflows. Now I'm going to briefly talk about peer code review, an important part of the software development process. A peer code review is when developers convene to check code for implementations, uh, that coding guidelines are followed, and for errors. Code reviews can accelerate the software development process since there are many benefits from them. Here we outline some benefits that code review pro provides. Um, discussions about the change can lead to more iterations on the code to improve or even correct it. During a code review, the reviewers may not have worked on that part of the code that is under review, and it gives them a better understanding of that part, as well as maybe even a better understanding of the larger project. The impact of the change on other parts of the code can be assessed. Will it break other parts? Or what are the implications of the change to interfaces of other parts? Also, there is a benefit of learning new techniques that can be applied to the reviewer's own development. Here is a link to a short blog on how to code review a PR. It's a quick read and may even help you get started. You may find Nasser Esty's webinar on testing and code review practice in research software development useful. Uh, you can view his talk and slides at this uh, link. He illustrated research done concerning code review practices by projects. Let's go over a few practices you can think about and add to your review process. Come up with some guidelines to create a formal process. Make sure in project planning that you allocate time for the review process. Make timely reviews as PRs come in. Ask for both a science review as well as a technical view, uh, review. Train both developers and reviewers about making and receiving feedback. Comments should be helpful in making improvements to the code and not necessarily critical to either the code or the developer. Also, developers need to accept comments that can help them improve their code. There are automatic code review tools that may prove helpful. If you implement review tools in your process, train reviewers in their use. So far, I've talked about the mechanisms of Git workflows. Now I'm going to review some models of workflows so that you can see how those mechanisms can be applied. And then I'll continue with workflows of some actual scientific software development projects. These are some commonly known models that have a variety of complexity. First, there is Git flow, which is a full featured workflow. This workflow is designed to support official releases. In addition to the main branch, it has a develop lifetime branch. All feature branches are based off develop and when completed are tested and merged into develop. Also in this complex model, there are release branches where releases are started from develop. Once they are ready for deployment, they are merged into main and tagged for release. This type of release branching model is used for systems that make scheduled releases. Sometimes there are hot fix items that are on their own branch and when completed and tested are merged into both main and develop. For more information about Git flow, you can look at the original blog by Vincent Dreisen, and there are also um, some subsequent articles about Git flow. 
GitHub Flow was published as an alternative to Git Flow for projects that don't need a structured release schedule, but want a continuous deployment. Thus, it is a much simpler workflow where all commits in the main branch are deployable. Feature branches are all based off main. Developers push to the remote repository often and are asked to start their PRs early to enable discussions during development and all PRs are tested and reviewed before merging into main. This is an easy workflow and might be a good starting point for a new project. Another alternative is GitLab Flow. It is useful for projects with a semi-structured release schedule. In this model, there are pre-production and production lifetime branches. Pre-production branches are, serve as a way for early adapters to try code and possibly find issues before production. Main is a staging area, and as code matures in main, it flows downstream into pre-production and production. Fixes are made in the main branch and will be cherry-picked for inclusion and release branches. You can look at the references for details of each of these models and think about what would work well for you. The workflows of these models and those of the scientific projects to come all use the basic branch mechanism. Really. In Git repositories, all the branches are really the same, but what makes a workflow successful to a project are the policies for the use of each of the branches in it. The policies need to be documented so developers, test developers, reviewers, and collaborators for a project know how to interact with the repository. Well-documented workflow policies also help when new developers join a project. We are going to examine the Git workflows for some software projects that are part of the scientific community. We will look at Trilinos, OpenMPI, and Flexi. Trilinos is a collaborative community project that focuses on large-scale complex multi-physics problems and solutions for high-performance computing. The project has a collection of scientific software libraries particularly known for linear and nonlinear solvers, transient solvers, optimization solvers, and uncertainty quantification solvers. The software development processes are based on a test on test driven development. Test driven development will be discussed later in the tutorial. For now, I'll stick to discussing the branching workflow used by the development teams. There are two lifetime branches, main and develop. All issue and feature branches are based off develop and merged into develop through a pull request. All pull requests must pass the pull request test suite before being merged. So all merge conflicts are exposed when merging into develop. This prevents any merge conflicts from occurring when commits are merged into main. OpenMPI is a high performance message passing library used in many scientific applications that run on high-performance computer systems of today. There are um, uh, several lifetime branches, including main, and ones for the last two supported releases. And then there's also can be an upcoming release if there is one scheduled. Um, the issues are worked on the branches that are applicable to it. Um, you can see here that issue one came from the previously supported release and it's applicable to both the latest and the previously supported release and so it is merged into both of them whereas issue two came off of main and only really applies to the upcoming release and uh, and also to main so main and the supported branches uh, are designed to be working at all times developers will work on main or feature branches depending on the complexity of the changes. So it's, if it's a very simple change, they'll work on main. Um, the testing includes C, uh, continuous integration testing, which uh, we, we talk about that later in the uh, tutorial. And it's only on PRs for any branch um, using Jenkins. So in these uh, continuous integration tests, they just use a limited set of compilers and hardware tests. 
but then there are more thorough testing and uh, more thorough testing is done nightly on all branches using the community build framework and this is a more complex set of compiler and hardware testing to make sure that uh, nothing fails additional testing is done for release candidates before they are released to the public flexi is a compile time configurable framework designed to support multi-physics application development for current and emerging HPC systems. Um, you can see that here that the version, versioning consists of an incompatible uh, develop branch, which breaks compatibility with previous versions. Um, features are major features are named one, two, etc. And then the releases minor um, releases are 1.x, 2.8x, and so on. And then uh, lower level uh, branches or tags are used to enumerate bug fixes. So um, in this diagram, if you look at it, I, if you can see it, um, you may have a major branch, which is 1.x, and that's only for new releases. The, it starts out as an initial 1.0, and that's the first release. And then they tag uh, the minor and sub-minor fixes um, from 1.00 to 1.01 and so forth for bug fixes. When 1.1 feature is released, again, there's an initial tag of 1.10, and then they re make releases uh, with the uh, last digit. And once a major version goes into maintenance mode, a new major feature branch begins. So in this case, you can uh, see where uh, at the very bottom where the new major feature will be a 2.x branch. And uh, like branches and tags are created for uh, the major version 2.0. And develop will be the, will have the last major release will be in there at all times. Um, the testing is they have a con customized unit testing framework. They started with Google test framework and customized that for their purposes. And they also have a special GitLab CI branch for doing continuous integration. Once again, uh, continuous integration will be discussed later in the um, tutorial. I've shown you some Git workflow models and workflows that are used in scientific projects. And there are references in the slides and in the resources on the site for this tutorial. You may want to take a deeper look at them and into some of those policies for the workflows that were presented. Like I said earlier, a Git workflow is not just the structure or names of the branches, but a combination of branches and a clear set of policies for their use. So you will want to establish policies that result in a correct code and correct code on particular branches and ensure that the team members can develop in parallel and have a good means of communication. Use issue tracking for communication between developers and their users. Uh, these issue tracking can help uh, if, especially if your software is an, an open source software, um, because anyone from the outside can use issues to help you fix um, issue tracking to help you fix issues they have found in your software. Clearly documented policies help minimize overheads associated with learning, following, and enforcing those policies. Adopt what is good for your team, consider the challenges of your particular project and the diversity of expertise in your team. Assess what is feasible for your team. And this is a good rule. Start simple and only add complexity where and when it is ne needed. That's the end of this section. Um, and if there's any questions, uh, we, we can help. Uh, thank you.